Hi, I would like to practice my presentation called QEs I have known and loved. And um, I give this group, uh, talk at the Theoretical and Evolutionary Community Ecology Group meeting of tomorrow. And the inspiration of this talk came from my colleague, a PhD called Liang Xu. He gave a presentation in that we should use graphical user interfaces, so programs with a GUI, with graphics, with a window, with buttons and things you can interact with, to sell our work to empiricists. And I think he only touched upon the subject and I think there's much more to be said about this, although I appreciate his efforts. So before I uh, dive into what I think is the broader message of this is uh, let's go back in time to the year 2002. Here we have uh, Professor Fanyo Weising, He's he is uh, one of the professors in theoretical uh, theoretical biology. And in 2002 he asked me like, dear Richelle, I want you to set up a C++ programming course that teaches how to program a GUI. So Fanyo he came from using Delphi. So with Delphi it's a Turbo Pascal, it's very, uh, it's around for decades now. And you can easily make a GUI uh, with those, with, with that program. So, um, since that time, so I've taught the course and now someone else teaches the course, uh, why should you use GUIs? Because I've made uh, dozens of programs with a GUI, so this for example is a GUI in which you can start, start all my programs that have a GUI. Uh, this is just a subset now. I, I can't keep track of how many programs I've made at the moment. So I'll try to come up some for some with five reasons why you want to use a GUI. So the first reason I think you want to use a GUI is to explore a theoretical model. And if you use a GUI in that way, it, it usually looks complex with all or many input parameters visible and changeable and you can directly see the plots on the screen. So for example this is my first or actually my second program ever that had a QE. It was about sex ratios in house flies and you can see that there are the parameters here, there are some things dispersing sex, who is in control and uh, you can see the supervisors here, it's a mixed image of Ido Pan and Magdalena Kozielska and you see the sex ratio fluctuating here and we had our we we had an idea um, how how sex ratio should be optimally be and uh, sexual system uh, sexual determining systems about those and we indeed came up with a nice idea uh, of, of our hypothesis so another program I made, this was a paid project for uh, Chris Wiley, I'm not sure, he was a PhD at that time or a postdoc, I don't know. You see immediately all the many parameters here, there are some things you can click there and you see this nice graph of uh, whatever it is. Another paid project was for uh, Tor Veen. He was a PhD at that time and he wanted to do some hawk dove game and honest signaling. You see a lot of graphs here and it also helps you check uh, if everything works as expected. Also here sometimes you want to explore, this is about a Kalman filter, whatever that is. It's a way to uh, estimate what variables will be in time if you know the system. And also, if you want to see the mathematics, you can also put that nicely in a GUI that you can see the entire calculation in front of you. So it helps to explore this model. Also here, this is a spatial plot. It's about mutualism in uh, seagrass and lorry pass and sulfide. So this is seagrass, this is sulfide that's being broken down. You see it does look nice. Uh, there are some parameters here, but here are also other things you can click and change the parameters off. Also this is a project I've developed for Megan, Megan Korte. That's why it's called the Korte project. It's about uh, uh, facilitation in which a plant facilitates another plant and there are some traits that change over time. So all the parameters are hidden here in these submenus. Uh, there's a save button here that you can save the prompts. It helps you to get an idea about how your model works. 
it helps you to explore your project. So, so you can use Goose to explore a model, but you may also want to use it to verify if a model works correctly. Like you can already do that in the previous models, uh, but sometimes you just want to verify how a model works. Uh, it still looks complex, but then you can only run specific tests and on some specific plots on your visual on the screen. For example, this is a project I did for Rampal Chan, in which I worked on some Newick phylogeny things. And you see that here I've measured some complexity in Newick, some tests, some probabilities, run times, memory use. So I was profiling my code here and I'm checking the complexity given for Newick. I was just verifying if it worked nicely. Uh, but you see that, that, that there's not much thing I, I could change. You just click run and that's all I could do. So I verify. Also, this is a project in which you put in a Newick and a Theta, whatever those are, and it gives you all the things you want to uh, check. Also here, this project is even called Test Triangle. It, it tests uh, a Voronoi triangulation given some kind of uh, shapes, and it gives you a, a triangulation there. And also the 3D. Um, this is a visualization um, of doing that in 3D. And this is how it looks like, and with that I can verify if it works. So not only you can use GUIs to explore a model, to verify if the model works correctly, but you also want to gently to use a GUI to gently introduce a fellow scientist to a model. Uh, those GUIs, they, they look still complex and there are many input parameters visible again. But usually the output of those tools are used as an input for another tool. So, for example, this is a tool I did not make. Uh, this is called Beauty. It's a tool to create a parameter file for Beast 2, which does a, a Bayesian inference. And you can click on stuff and it creates a file that you can load in a later step. And uh, I've also made uh, such a similar GUI, which is called Lumiere, in which you do the same thing as Beauty. It's called Beautier. Uh, but it creates an, a beast, uh, it creates an R function call that does exactly the same as Beauty would do because uh, I programmed Babette and Babette uses, um, uh, you have to, in Babette you have to set up an inference model and directly you can run beast uh, on that uh, and with Lumiere you can directly create the R command to do so. So this is a project and this is not a complete screenshot, it's called DayGem. And what it does, it shows you how to use a program called DAISY and you see some stuff going on here. So this is very helpful in getting to understand the model. But if you scroll down, then there's some output here and this output, uh, if you use DAISY, this is the events that happened in time according to the DAISY project. And this is also some well-known outputs that can be used as input for an actual DAISY run. So this is a tool that allows you to, um, to, to, to get an idea about how DAISY works and plug it into the DAISY itself. So, uh, you can, so you can introduce to a fellow scientist your model, but some models, some QEs are used by layman, and in that case the GUIs look as simple as possible and not always you can have all things visible but the plots are visible on the screen. So for example this is a project I made in 2006 I think for the Dutch Committee of Genetic Modification together with Fanya Weiss and Kuke Belsma and Wilhelmine Smith Kleesma who was a PhD at that time. Uh, Kuke Belsma was a professor then already and Fanya Weiss was a professor there as well. This is how it looks. You see it's uh, there are some things you can slide, there are some graphs, it looks very simple, not that many complex information on the screen, there's a friendly menu bar. And this would help policy makers um, how to deal with genetically modified organisms, in this case pollen. Uh, but also this is called SOAS-SIM, which is uh, SOAS Dutch for Sexually Transmitted Disease, STD. So this is an STD simulator in which you have individuals that interact, have a certain 
personality that you can see in the color and they randomly mate and they ask to do it safe or uns or they have unsafe sex and you can see uh, an infectious disease spread in time. Uh, I used that in teaching in 2007. This is also uh, a GUI for laymen. I also use this in teaching which simulates the human immune response in which you have to create all the type of uh, white blood cells like the macrophage, the B cell, the T cell, etc. There's a virus infection, you need to get rid of it and here it tells you what to do. So this is also a bit of a tutorial how it works, the, the, the human immune response. So th that was definitely to be used by laymen, but QEs, they also make learning a new programming language fun. And with a GUI, if used in that way, it always looks fun and the output should be directly visible. It is, for example, this is a game. It's called Nature Zen. There are some blocks you can move. There are creatures walking around and interacting. There's a there's some kind of score bar, a Zen bar, which goes up and down depending on how well you do. Uh, there's a shop, uh, which we never implemented. But this is a fun game in which uh, these were 14 to 17 year old kids learning how to use C++. And there's a similar project in uh, Trest, the theoretical group in Groningen, in which you make a game. And that's jolly good fun, especially for beginners. You can see what's going on. So, the question is why don't we use QEs? Well, for starters, it's not taught anymore, so most people will say, well, I have no idea how to use a GUI. And there's no, um, the people feel usually that there's no time uh, to learn how to use a GUI. Also there's a misconception there as well that uh, a GUI would be too much work. So people forget if they say this that a GUI usually is only a fraction of the complete program. For example this is a program called Dejem, I showed it in a couple of slides ago. So most of your simulation it will be logic. So about 90% and I find this consistently over all my simulations, 90% of all your code will be logic and only a, t a little layer, in this case 11%, will be about the actual display of that code. And also the GUI usually doesn't have bugs. Bugs is usually in the logic part of the code. That's where the so you'll mostly work on that. QE is just displaying what you already have. And if the logic is incorrect, well the logic, the, the QE can help you find this, but it doesn't, you don't need to modify the QE usually. It's usually the logic that you will be working on and debugging. Another misconception is that the QEs are slower. Yeah, well if you run a simulation with a QE, yet yeah, definitely it will be slower. But it doesn't mean that you run your simulations using a GUI all the time. In your architecture, you separate your model from how it looks like. It's called the model view controller architecture. Uh, and the model is your logic. And you can have a fancy queue with the controller and the display all. But usually, when we run our bigger simulations, we give it a, an input file. The model reads it, produces another output file. Um, so you don't use a GUI uh, for your actual runs. It's just for exploring your model and catching bugs. Also, you cannot run a queue on the cluster. Yeah, of course not. You cannot run a GUI on the cluster. Well, you can, but one does simply not run a GUI on a cluster. One supplies a parameter file uh, and your logic, like the, the other part of your code that handles files, will just work on it without displaying anything. And the last misconception is that some people think that the runs are too long for a GUI. Well, in when you use a graphical user interface you don't do run long, long runs. You keep your runs short because you should explore your model and not do your final actual academic uh, publishable simulations when using a GUI. Unless of course your simulation is very simple but still you, you use command line things for that. So then I conclude, so I think that, that QEs they can be used as a way to learn a uh, program or to learn about your model or to teach about your model. And you can give it to other people and they can find out how your model works themselves. And would QEs be taught? 
then scientists and especially beginners have a better means to express themselves. They can communicate better because they give, for example, a layman the means to figure out things themselves uh, instead of going through things like um, like converting it, like reading it in uh, a spreadsheet or whatever. So my idea is that it would be a good idea to teach beginners how to program a GUI in any language, uh, because that would aid them when learning a new language. They can make games, for example, which is fun. Seeing graphs or games are fun. And I think that Fanyo, in my opinion, has been right uh, to request a course with GUIs. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you very much. Well, this is a PowerPoint, so or this is a YouTube video, so there are no questions. So I'm going to interrupt now, and thanks for watching. Bye.